I am Henry Ogunjimi, a reporter and producer with Channels Television. For nine years, I have reported on issues ranging from politics, brands and marketing, elections, labor struggles, and education, but never on trafficking of humans. The third Global Slavery Index ranks Nigeria eighth in the world, with close to 900,000 of a youthful population trapped in debt bondage, and many of them sold for sex in parts of Europe. Sometime in the year 2015, I met a 26-year-old lady from Benin City. Tonya was deported from Italy, where she had worked as a sex slave from age 17. Tonya's story leads me on a journey to Europe, from her hometown in Benin City, through the route in the Sahara Desert. This is my discovery. I begin my journey in Benin City, the capital of Edo State, in south-south Nigeria. The city lies some 320 kilometers by road east of Lagos. And the population here is put at less than 2 million people. Following Nigeria's independence from British rule in 1960, Benin City became the capital of Midwestern region when the region was split from Western region in June 1963. It remained the capital of the region when the region was renamed Bendel State in 1976. then became the capital of Edo when Bendel was split into Delta and Edo states in 1991. Once revered as the center of Nigeria's rubber industry and the processing of palm nuts for oil, Benin City has a great and rich culture with an appreciable influence on that of West Africa. Popular also for the Benin bronzes, portrait figures, busts and groups created in iron, carved ivory and brass works, a trademark of the rich culture and tradition of the people of Benin City. The city is famous for its walls, a combination of ramparts and moats that measured between 20 and 40 feet and used as a defense of the defunct Kingdom of Benin, which is present-day Benin City. Today, a bustling commercial center has evolved in the city and many go about their lawful businesses during the day. When night falls, the ugly side of Benin City is exposed. Young women line major street corners as commercial sex workers. Not to ruffle any feathers, I choose to film from inside the car. Every young woman here is a potential prostitute in Europe. For many of them, 
in Benin City begins their adventure to the west. In Benin City, they are recruited by the traffickers. Meet Tonya, a 26-year-old returnee. Before coming down to Benin City, Tonya had told me how she was lured to Italy when she was just 17 years old. It's now over five years since Tonya was deported, but her memories of Italy has continued to hunt her. So what is she trying to say? I was like... <coughs> she narrates a ordeal in the presence of Sister Bibiana, an anti-trafficking activist. She said that the next day that I'll be going with them to the to the streets to work. If I, I know I don't want to stay here, she's not going to waste her money that she used in bringing me back home, that she's going to do me something. For three days, I did not eat. She refused to give me food since I said I don't want to do the work. She collected my phone because I wanted to call my parents to tell them, look at what I'm going through. Whenever she's going out, she locked me in the house, hold the key, the food, wherever her food is, the food she cooked, she made sure the lock, she locked up the door. It's just the only the room that I live, that is where I will have access to. So the other following week, I have to follow them to work. I said, okay, since this is the life here, why, let me still join. That was how I started doing the same job with them. Tonya tells me that it is the lack of prospects for many young girls in Benin City that makes them easy prey for traffickers. She believes this will not change as long as traffickers continue to go unpunished. I left because of in order for me to be able to help my family and I came back empty handed. So because of that I'm, sh I'm ashamed to go back to the family to even go to my family. My parents. Where are you living? First, straight down to come up for South Bay Road. For Express. I tried to know why Nigeria's anti trafficking authority has not been too successful in checking the activities of traffickers, but I encounter a number of bureaucratic bottlenecks. The coordinator in a do state insists she requires clearance from the headquarters in the nation's capital Abuja before she speaks to me on camera. So as you go, once you hear somebody promising you heaven and earth on earth, please, if you don't know how to run, go and learn how to run. You will run, you will run what? 990. Sister Let's Bibiana go. has been very vocal on issues of trafficking. She now tells young girls about the dangers. They will take them to another building. And that is how these girls were destroyed. Unfortunately, one of them became pregnant. When they tried what they could to abort the child, they could not. And then they throw the child. The good Samaritan brought them to their shelter in Lagos. So my sisters, to so be warned earlier is better. So that you will be, you know, a kind of stretching yourself, get ready. When they come in any way, we tell them they can go to places. They can go to hell. She also leads an anti-trafficking activist group, Committee for the Support of Dignity of Women, Kosudo. There are some even worse than this, those that go through the desert. They go through a lot of hell. So when they come back, first and foremost, we welcome them, make this place a home for them, and then begin to cancel them. When you cancel them, maybe after a month or two, and then you know that they have regained themselves, then you begin to ask them, what do you think you can do? You can't be idle all the day. Then they will tell you, if they trade they don't have, you arrange for them to go and learn it. And when they learn it, those of them that are 
um, brought back by agency, like if it's in Italy, most of the time, slave no more, that they help this, uh, our girls, give little money to reintegrate them back into the society. Get a shade for them, shop where they were going to sell, house where they will live, and then the um, articles. We usually go together and buy it with the girl. Then settle the girl. I monitor the girl for at least one year, and then you leave the girl. But it's in my dream, seeing so many things. I felt sick. I could not Tonya I has lost faith in the state institution. After five years as a sex slave, she was eventually deported by Italian authorities. So one day I was at home. They came into my where I was staying with that my friends. I left his place after a year plus. I was now on my own. As I was in the house, they did pass in my house. The the, the because if you don't have an uh, if you don't have document, there is no way you can get a place. So some people that have document, they rented apartment like three bedroom. I have to beg them. I carry one room every month. I pay them three euro for for the uh, house rent. So the person that owns the house, that carried the house, they were doing party in the house. They didn't tell me, I was inside the room. After doing the party, they started fighting. That was how police busting into our house. And they arrested me and bring me back home to Nigeria. Today, with the help of the activist group, Tonya now trades in Benin City, where she owns a small shop. There, she shows me the places in Italy that were for her hell. She wants something done against her former tormentors, especially because many other girls are still trapped in their ranks. I stay some more time in Benin City to find anyone involved in this business of trafficking. They usually do not boast openly about their job because of the illegality. After lengthy negotiations, two smugglers agree to a meeting I'll tell them the 